Hey everybody, this is Robert again, making a video specifically on solar and SRP and hopefully clarifying some of the complexities around their solar plans, demand charges, and basically what setup that makes the most sense for your home. And I hope this helps some of you as a few of you have reached out, you found the other videos helpful, but with SRP, it's still quite complex if we just really look at their power plans. So generally the idea is with a demand charge, SRP basically created a way to charge you despite the fact that you might offset most of your energy so that they can still have a way to generate revenue for the business and cover their grid maintenance costs, the staff that they have to provide in the general service. Since you can't fully go off grid, SRP still has costs and their stance is if you're buying solar, solar customers, if you were on, let's say a one-to-one -one net metering, which is, hey, however much you produce at any time offsets your usage on other times and it nets out one-to-one -one with no other charges. If more people get that, they're going to go out of business or they're going to have a huge revenue hit or they're just going to have to increase prices on everybody else who didn't invest in solar because their costs don't necessarily decrease because the delivery charge, the, the, your house being hooked up to the grid, their grid maintenance, it's still the same. And you're giving your money to Tesla or some other solar provider, not them. So in their, in their mind, why should others subsidize your costs? So they needed a creative way to basically charge customers for solar. And they do that through some plans that are on solar that don't have demand charges and just much higher rates throughout the day and peak times, or they have crazy low rates, which is what I'm going to talk to about now, which is their customer generation plan E27 or their average demand plan, which I recommend and others recommend, which is their E15 plan, which will sell you the, some of the lowest electricity rates in the country because they know they can make up, uh, not uh, selling you near wholesale costs what they pay, which is like uh, uh, under three cents a kilowatt hour. They can make it, make it up by charging you demand charges, which basically means if you use any electricity beyond what you can produce or what your battery can supply, they're gonna have a crazy high electricity rate. So what you're looking at on my phone is 41 kilowatt hours used today. You see some spikes throughout the day, but the main peak time right now, which will end through, um, starting November 1st and shift from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. when it gets cooler here where you don't really need to run the AC is two to eight the other six months of the year. So May through October, it's two to eight o'clock. Electricity is between three and six cents a kilowatt hour, depending on the time of the year um, during the day. But the demand charges are what kick in if you use electricity between two and eight. So this is my solar production. This is my battery offset. So you can see that I use some battery, the sun charges it, and then the battery is um, combining with the solar to help cover uh, some peak times. My wife got home early and started cooking dinner. So this spiked all the way to unfortunately 9.1 kilowatts for a very brief short amount of time, but I could not offset that with my battery or the solar that was being produced at the time. So if I take all that away, this is my electricity usage during the peak times. Was any time the battery couldn't cover the energy usage, I pretty much got screwed. So if I add these numbers back, it said during peak, I used half a kilowatt hour from the grid in total. So maybe I was using five kilowatt hours because my electric range, I have an induction range, which uses a ton of electricity. My AC was running, which is another three and a half to four kilowatt hours. The TV is running a lot of electricity being used at the same time. So it exceeded my production and battery and was only on for a little bit. The range isn't, you know, using that power for a whole hour. But the point is a half a kilowatt was used today. And if I average that every day, I used a little bit just over, I would see during the summer uh, a 10 to $12 demand charge because I used only half a kilowatt on average beyond what I was able to produce. They charge during the summer, and let me share my screen. This is their plan. So let's actually go through this. This is their E15 plan, and this is that monthly charge if you have a, a panel up to 200 amps, which if you don't have the right size panel, keep in mind, you better budget, which Tesla does ask during the buying process, another $3,500 to upgrade your main panel. So that's something to keep in mind if you have an old house or $45 monthly. But here's your demand charge. If you can ignore all this, the point is during the summer, which are a few months of the year, then they have summer peak, which is I believe July and August, and then winter, which is uh, November through April, you will pay 20, 
two dollars per kilowatt that you use beyond what you're able to produce from the battery and the sun which we know is, is a lot it's only your sun's the sun's not really producing much after three o'clock like it, it goes down to like one or two kilowatt hours obviously it depends on the size of your system but as the sun sets and the demand time is through eight o'clock you need something to cover you between 6 p.m and 8 p.m if you want to run the ac and you know with this summer with record highs of like almost two straight months of 110 plus degree heat, you're gonna be running that AC. If you have a big house, you might have two ACs. So you, in order to offset the fact that you definitely don't wanna average five to 10 kilowatts above what you're able to produce from the sun, you're now looking at five, if you average, let's say five kilowatt hours beyond on average per day, meaning you could just run five kilowatts of electricity for one hour beyond it during the peak time, and you average that during the month, 5x you're looking at a hundred and ten dollar demand charge like that's crazy so how do you offset that you buy power walls and the how many power walls you buy is depends on how many appliances you want to run at the same time so each power wall can hold about 13 kilowatts of electricity that's usable throughout the day and your solar is going to hopefully cover you your solar is going to power up and hopefully be charged whether you have one or two power walls, if you get a medium plus size system, they can charge them pretty quick. I have an eight kilowatt system for my home and that can pretty much offset some power and charge my one power wall. But the problem with one power wall is you're only allowed to draw five kilowatt hours of electricity at once. And after two and a half hours, the power wall is completely depleted. It's really easy to use more than five kilowatts if your AC is already using four and then you have the TV on and then any other appliances that are just plugged in, you're already at the five. So if somebody comes home and runs the microwave, the dishwasher, or if you have an electric range or water heater goes off, that's already eating into the grid, which is racking up demand charges. So if you think about it, having two power walls is gonna offset a lot more electricity, but more importantly, it allows you to pull 10 kilowatt hours at once from both power walls. So you really need to think about how much power am I using at the same time later in the afternoon until eight o'clock during the summer. That's the most important step. Whatever you do to offset your summer usage, you need the smallest size system that you can get away with, and then your winter is gonna be covered. You should almost have zero charges during the winter time because your batteries will power you all day since you don't really need to run the AC. And if you have a good insulated home, you don't have to run the heat that much. So those are the things to kind of keep in mind is that you need a good size system to charge your batteries, but if you do have batteries, you need enough batteries to hold your home over during two to eight o'clock. And mainly it's between like four and eight because your solar and your remaining battery storage will kind of hold you over the rest of the day. But as the solar goes away, you're totally dependent on batteries. That way, if you run an AC and you run the range and everything else, you can pull eight, nine, 10 kilowatt hours at once, but you also don't want to deplete your batteries. So that's where, if you think about it, think about your usage between two and eight during the summer, May through October, and then really think about how much you're pulling or needing from the grid or would want to use without sacrificing your comfort in the later part of the day between like four o'clock and eight o'clock. That's the main thing to keep in mind. And you wanna know what that number is so it lets you know how many batteries to buy. That way, if there's ever a grid outage, you also don't want to deplete your batteries to zero just to avoid the demand charge, because then if there's a storm or an outage, A, you're going to produce less sun, B, you're going to have no battery reserves to power your home anyways, and that kind of defeats part of the purpose of having a battery is emergency power when the grid goes down, which happened a couple times this year, and it was so amazing to have some battery left. So you want the smallest size system that enables this power plan to charge a few power walls if, if needed for your size home based on how much power you're using at peak times. In the winter time, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., your power walls, if they're able to cover you in the summer, will be able to cover you in the winter time. So that's what to think about is you want to avoid these demand charges and that unlocks these electricity rates that are literally off peak three and a half cents during summer and four and just four cents at summer peak. This lets you charge a, a 100 kilowatt power pack for $4. That's nuts. This is $3.60 off peak. That's totally nuts. 
you don't want to charge on peak. So even though there's those demand charges, if you use power, they're only charging you like six cents. You'll rarely see an on peak charge. It's really the demand charges where they make the money, not from charging you these rates. Using more power off peak, which is Saturday, Sunday, all major holidays, and then between uh, and not 2 to 8 p.m. and then not 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. during the um, winter months. Those are the times where using more electricity actually is how you win. The goal is not to get to zero, is to pay as little as possible in your service charge and your off-peak charge. And then your on peak time will basically be zero and you'll have no demand charges and you're buying electricity at the most lowest rate throughout the country. And the reason why we say you don't want to get to zero is because if you invest in a bigger system, so every like size up with Tesla is about $8,000. You're essentially never going to earn back that $8,000 because you're only getting a credit of one to one of, of as high as is six cents. And that's only during peak times. Any off-peak generation, you're only earning back four cents. To earn $8,000 back at four cents would take you over 20 years. So it doesn't make sense just to keep buying a panel upgrade to offset the off-peak usage or overproduce to offset off-peak times at, at like over midnight because the charge is too little. If this is the normal rate of electricity, no one would ever buy solar because it's too expensive and you'd never, uh, solar would have to half at the prices that it already is. So an eight kilowatt system, 16,000 before incentives, that would have to cut in half. Like it just, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so that's the reason use off peak times. Charging is so absurdly low, but you really need to avoid the demand charges. And that's how you win. Get enough battery to offset, a small enough system to charge those batteries. If you get three power walls, you can get away with a medium sized system since you could charge all three with a day's solar. And since you're probably not gonna be depleting the batteries, every day you're pretty much earning back power to um, recharge the batteries again and then maybe a little bit more. And this basically halves your electricity because SRP's basic plan, which is 20 bucks a month and 11 cents a kilowatt hour flat rate all year, and then in the summer, above 2,000 kilowatt hours use, it goes to 13 cents. That's what you're comparing to. And these rates are less than half that. So you can expect about a 60% drop in your power bill using this strategy. And then any additional power that you're using, the savings is still 60%, but it's awesome because it's a, such a low rate that it's like happy to pay that amount because it's so little. Run more AC, run your pool pump, time your water heater if you can to run at off peak hours. And that's the way you're winning with SRP. Definitely not the uh, priciest, but it prevents you from needing to buy such a big system thinking you're gonna offset your plan when you would just be totally killing yourself if you didn't get batteries. So that's my, my thought on the subject. I hope this is helpful to kind of explain. It's the E15 price plan average demand. I don't recommend the EV price plan or the other plans because you're spending so much money on electricity at the peak times, like well over 20, 25 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. And even though there's no demand charges, you're not going to ever offset that because on those plans, SRP only credits you back 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour, which is absurd. Um, so hope this was helpful. Best of luck. I have my referral code below. Please use that if you're going to buy solar and you don't already have one. You get $100 off. They'll write you a check for getting uh, the solar system installed. And uh, hopefully that'll help with a nice dinner for your family. Everyone take care. Stay cool. And I hope your system gets installed by the end of the year. And if not, Tesla will probably drop prices again next year because the federal tax credit goes down. Anyways, best of luck. Bye-bye.